Hey dudes, it's me, Mighty the Armadillo here, and welcome back for you guys for some more of the forms of the Maxi Toys videos here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Mega Man 5 for the Game Boy, from the likes of the forms of the continuation of the Mega Man Marathon 2. So, last time we did manage to deal with the forms of the second set, with the forms of those Star Droids, and also, since we actually got all four of those crystals, so that way we're able to actually get ourselves our special item with us during the course of the item shop. So in this case though, since so today for this video, is the fact that we'll eventually try to able to wrap things up for everything, from the likes of the forms of Mega Man 5 for the Game Boy, in this case, the final conclusion to the rest of the Game Boy Mega Man games industry. So because of this though, yeah, let me just go ahead and grind some extra lives before we're able to actually just decide to continue, because we're going to be able to actually just to go ahead and uh, head straight into Terror again, after the events of the beginning portion of the game. So yeah, let's get this uh, fight started then. I finally destroyed all the space stations. Oh, speaking of a devil, you fool, Mega Man, you have militated with my plan for the last time. We could have created a new world for all robots. How can I face my master now? I must redeem myself by blowing you to pieces. So basically, here we have Terra himself, and basically though, is the fact that in order to able to deal with him, is the fact that we need to able to use the Grab Buster, and because of this though, um, you can potentially try to able to keep on grabbing the actual blocks, and then essentially just, well, just deal some bit of damage to him, or in this case, yeah, Deep Digger, as far as the actual, uh, uh, that particular weapon is called, by the way, so... Yeah, I do apologize about the fact that my cover take is a little bit iffy at points because it's been a couple of hours since I actually last played this, so but I do apologize for that. So, after dealing with him, basically we're able to get ourselves probably as the coolest weapon in the whole entire game, which, as far as I'm aware, it might be something that's pretty unique, and also it might be pretty much mandatory if we decide to able to finish the game itself, so... So let's see what this uh, weapon is called then. You got Spark Chaser. Hmm, interesting. So that way it can actually home in on, on any enemies. So that's pretty awesome. I should have defeated all the Star Droids. What? What's that star? Wait. It's moving. No. It can't be. Wily? Is he behind us? Oops. That was close. Yep, especially noticeable that, uh, well, we immediately catch a ride with, uh, Rush. Hit the jets, Rush. Let's go. So yeah, we're actually going to be able to go into outer space again, except now, um, if this is where we able to actually decide to able to go ahead and get into the forms of the last few stages in Mega Man 5 for the Game Boy. Which means, yes, we now ended up in Wily Star, which I'm guessing is kind of like the equivalent to Death Star. Or in this case, the Death Egg from the likes of the forms of Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and especially noticeable with the forms of Death Star from the likes of the forms of Star Wars. So, just gotta think about it. This game still, it does remind me of the forms of Star Wars for some reason, but I digress. So, yeah, in these kind of stages, well, to be more specifically in the first stage, as you can see, we're now able to actually just to take control of the forms of Rush Space. I think that's what the actual, uh, the actual technique is called anyway. So in this case though, all you have to do is basically we have to be able to keep shooting those specific enemies in order to able to progress, and basically that's all you really have to do. So because of that though, but you have to be very careful though, because as far as I'm aware, this is the only stage in the game that it does not feature any checkpoints whatsoever. So because of this though, you have to be perfect on this. And similar to the forms of how it does it on uh, Sky Chase Zone from the likes of the forms of Sonic the Hedgehog 2, 
basically knows the fact that, well, you just don't are able to get hit loads of times, because if you do, and then basically if you get your health drained, then basically though, you have to start all over again. Especially if you get to the point where now we ended up on the forms the fastest motion, and because of that though, we now need to dodge those lasers, which I seriously swear to god, these lasers are easily the hardest aspect about this level, so, but, the, but usually luckily for me, I've managed to able to go myself my energy tanks, so at the very least I can able to actually just be safe from now on, so, anyway, after we pass through that, then I'm pretty sure we ended up on a different perspective, I see. And from here, we can able to take on the next boss, which appears to be known as Skull Blazer. So in this case though, is the fact that his weakness is pretty obvious. It was, uh, Rush Space. So, basically just keep on shooting at the actual, uh, the mouth itself. Well, to be more specifically, when his mouth, uh, starts to open, it's your chance to able to actually just to keep shooting at it, but, uh, you have to be very careful on a lot of multitude of things. Like, for example, that, uh, sometimes he just either goes either up or down, which this means about the fact that sometimes you're able to actually summon those, uh, these missiles that will try to able to actually just to directly try to aim on you, so. But, uh, the best strategy I can think of is the fact that you have to get rid of those missiles as much as you can. So because of that though, that way you don't get any harm whatsoever. So, in this case though, you probably get the idea of how this is going to turn out to be, so. But yeah, for the most part though, this boss, although it might be pretty tricky at certain points, but uh, regardless of such though, I think you should probably uh, deal with it just okay enough, so. Anyways, I think I'm not exactly ready for that. Oh wait, yes! Whew, that was pretty close, especially notice of all, I uh, almost attempted to able to get myself screwed over every once in a while, but regardless of such, we did manage to beat it regardless, so. Now we move on to stage 2, that we are going back into platforming segment again. Except now, there's going to be some very, 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 very tricky platforming here and there. Especially noticeable about the fact that, well, relatively speaking, there might be some couple of spikes here everywhere. And on top of all that stuff, though, some more familiar enemies that we've already faced off against ever since the past few stages ago. So in this case, though, that might be uh, self-explanatory. So, uh... And by the way, these particular levels does have multitude of pathways, by the way. You can either take either the normal, uh, down route, or to simply go onto this route, and try to utilize the forms of several of those, uh, you know, Star Troid weapons in the process, and in that way, uh, the reason why I am ended up, up up there, is mainly because I think there might be something a bit more secrecy up there. But, either way, though, we'll just see what happens there, so... ah, oh, screw you, you stupid turret! Just trying to able to get in my way while uh, trying to able to deal with these spikes above. Oh well, no big deal. But at the very least, we already got the uh, uh, the we're going back to all the way to the starting uh, location in this particular stage. So yeah, there's not much else to say. So. Anyway, uh, a few things I want to explain for this point today, and that is the fact that, yes, today's day is, of course, the, uh, the 16th of August today, in this case, in 2022 today, and it looks like we have, we're now on to, directly speaking, is the fact that we're now on to the halfway point in terms of the forms of the entire month already, which is specifically August, before we move on to September. So, at the very least, though, we're actually getting very, very close. Uh, not only that, but we also almost nearly at the end for the sake of the forms of the actual summer season before we move on to once again the autumn season. So because of that though, yeah, I can't believe we're actually getting, uh, quite fast, kind of thing about it, when it comes to able to progress onto, oh sweet, I actually got myself two extra lives by simply able to actually utilize the new forms of that HM, um, uh, you know, with that particular Mega Arm upgrade, so at the very least, I can able to actually grab those. Wait a second, are those glass stains stuff that looks familiar to you? Oh my gosh, we actually managed to come across into our familiar R Mega Man Killer, which appears to be body forms of Anchor. So yeah, basically, we have the returning boss fight from the likes of Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge, which is, appears to be Anchor, and basically, just like any forms of how it does it in Dr. Wily's Revenge, his weakness is obviously, well, not just for the forms of the Mega Buster from the, uh, uh, Dr. Wily's Revenge, but to be more accurately, though, his weakness this time is Mega Arm, because, obviously, this game managed to a able to introduce into ourselves the Mega Arm. Well, I don't know if the next Mega Man game will able to actually feature Mega Arm again, 
But uh, regards to such though, we'll also have to wait and see what happens in the future, so I digress. So yeah, I get the strong sense of feeling that uh, we might be able to actually come across into uh, the majority of the forms of the, uh, the Mega Man Killers from the past installments, so it might be pretty interesting though, especially noticeable because, well, relatively speaking, after the events when Mega Man already deal with the forms of uh, Anchor from Dr. Wily's Revenge and uh, Proto Man already taking care of the forms of Quaint from the likes of Mega Man 2 for the Game Boy, and Pac-Man has already deal with the forms of, uh, oh, speaking of Quaint, there he is right here. So, I wonder who he's gonna be challenging this time. Oh, wait a second, he still utilizes the forms of the Poco Stick thing again, isn't he? Although, the only difference is now, though, is the fact that we don't able to actually receive, uh, the actual, uh, the weapons this time. So, unlike in those games, respectively, you know, Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge, Mega Man 2, 3, and 4 for the Game Boys, because, obviously, that, uh, sense that we've already used those weapons in those games, so... And I don't think we can able to actually get enough room for the actual weapon storage. So, I guess that's perfectly fine by my case, because, obviously, that, uh, you probably already know these guys already, so... Anyways, there's, uh, Quaint done, so... Yeah, I digress. Because, uh, relatively speaking, uh, as I said before, um, Pac-Man has already managed to deal with the forms of Punk, and, uh, recently, Silver of the Hedgehog has already deal with the forms of Ballade, so... Yeah, that pretty much as far as I can usually explain about this, basically, so... Oh, there's another energy tank up there, so it might be a good thing, because I can able to actually grab that up there. But here's the thing, though, we need to be very careful of this section, because obviously with spikes, more enemy placements, and you probably get the idea, so... Anyways, let's get up there, while... Usually I'm trying to able to try my best to able to jump a bit higher, not higher, higher way up, but... Either way though, it's just the fact that you have to watch out and just try to able to jump on the exact um, timing. Because obviously if you mess up with that jump, then obviously you will die. And I think the checkpoint is right after when uh, you destroyed uh, one of those Mega Man killers. So yeah, that pretty much summarizes that such there. So and I believe the next robot, or in this case the next Mega Man killer we need to uh, have to fight against is Punk himself. So this time around though, that's, uh, I believe that's, uh, relatively speaking, uh, despite the fact that I was potentially trying to show you guys the actual main, uh, weakness when it comes to the forms of the Mega Man killers in this game, like, I do definitely know, already know about the fact that with, uh, Anchor, his weakness is obviously, uh, Mega Arm, and then, uh, as for Quaint, his weakness this time is actually by the forms of Photon Missile. And uh, as far as Punk though, uh, his weakness is obviously Salt Water. So yeah, that might be something worth mentioning for the sake of the forms that have different weakness in mind. So now, as far as the forms of the last Mega Man Killer though, we can probably expect what this is going until whenever we're able to come across into our, well, our familiar foe from the likes of Mega Man 4 for the Game Boy. So. Which is pretty obvious, it was Ballade, because you see that little, uh, statues on that particular display. Although, sometimes though, this enemy can really throw me off at points, but thankfully we can just simply slide before we're able to take the invincibility frames like so. So here it is, it's Ballade again, after the events of Mega Man 4 for the Game Boy, so pretty much expected by this point. But, uh, I think his weakness is obviously either the Photon or Photon Missile, or, uh, Bubble Bomb. But obviously I'm just gonna go for the actual Mega Arm, just in case I just wanna able to make the fight a bit challenging. So, because, despite the fact that I just somehow get hit multiple times, and thus, I really don't want to able to actually waste all of our, uh, weapon ammos until whenever we come across into our another familiar thing, until whenever we continue our progressioning for the sake of the forms of this particular stage, so... Well, after trying to able to go for this last, uh, endurance drop. And if we go over here, while, uh, trying to able to dash through those little, uh, oh, what do we have here? We have Proto Man himself. And I think, uh, much like the forms of how it does it on Mega Man 4 for the Game Boy, uh, it's just a weapon reveal, so. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got something on my throat there. I do apologize for that, uh, folks, but, uh, I digress. 
So yeah, basically, just like it evolves the power dust on Mega Man 4 for the Game Boy, that uh, basically Proto Man can sometimes give you some random items. It could be either be, um, you know, energy tanks, one ups, weapon with fuel energy, health pickup, or most importantly, the S item. So because of that, though, which I think I've already explained about the actual S item, what that does, um, after the events of the previous parts of this entire Let's Play so far. So. Here we go folks, onto the forms of the rematch uh, room once again, just like the forms of how it does in the Mega Man 4 for the Game Boy, except rather than fights against with the familiar robot masters, instead, we're actually having a rematch against with those familiar star droids throughout the whole game. So yeah, you get the idea of how this is going, so... Like, obviously, taking down, you know, Mercury, Venus, as well as the forms of Mars, and, uh, Saturn, Jupiter, uh... Uh, Uranus, and as well as the forms of Neptune and Pluto. I think the only uh, time exception to this, though, I think it's to me more specifically Terra, because, well, we've already did manage to destroy him, of course, so, yeah, you probably get the gist of it, so. But, uh, you know, you get the idea of how this is going, so. Alright, so we just have to able to take down this particular Star Troid again, so, yeah. Keep on doing that, and then just like before, then every time you defeat these Star Troids, then basically you can get yourself some bit of your health back after taking um, several hits by certain attacks and all that stuff though, just in case if you don't are able to die and all that stuff though. But luckily if you do die, then you obviously go back onto the teleporting uh, area, so at the very least that's that. Hey Pluto, you know with that particular, uh, with that, you know, wild cat or a, uh, an animal kind of like uh, starting position and stuff like that, but uh, either way though, that's as far as I can think about it. Although I was gonna able to try to able to deal with, uh, you know, uh, Grab Buster, but uh, obviously that uh, we can't able to actually use that at the moment because, well, there's no uh, uh, things around here that I can possibly be able to describe because, well, then again, it has been uh, a couple of hours, like I said, since I actually last played this, so especially noticeable throughout the whole entire day after taking a break for, you know what I mean, when it comes to the forms of uh, having a nice relaxation and all that stuff though, for it's summer relieved and stuff like that, but either way though, it's hard to explain. So of course, we, we can now take on Saturn, so... I'm pretty sure it's uh, like Saturn and stuff like that, so I could have short so anyway, so Alright, so I believe we're now onto the halfway point of this entire room right here, so uh Yeah, that might be something is worth noting for anyway, so Although I would like to explain more details about this, although uh, relatively speaking actually is the fact that uh, until tomorrow anyway for those of you lived in the UK that uh, New Super Mario Bros. 2 on the UK version will be expected to become a decade old. So, yeah, despite the fact that how most people find, uh, you know, New Super Mario Bros. 2 to be one of the weakest in terms of the forms of the New Super Mario Bros. games, although I don't mind it personally, it's just the fact that the only gripe I have with the game is just the difficulty is way too easy, so because obviously you can get a lot of extra lives super easily on that particular game in mind, so unlike the ones how it does in Super Mario 3D Land, that uh, it might be pretty easy in some levels, but uh, that uh, eventually later on the game gets a lot challenging, so whilst compared to New Super Mario Bros. 2 on the 3DS, basically though the difficulty is toned down, so because of that though, I honestly have no idea why they managed able to decrease the challenge for the difficulty back in the day, but, uh, I honestly have no words to able to actually fault about something like this, but, uh, regardless of such though, that's as far as I can usually try to explain this, until, I think I'll let, uh, Tiana will be able to mention more details about the forms of their 10th anniversary of the release of New Super Mario Bros. 2 during that time, so, in this case though, it's sort of she, she, rather, can able to move on to the next Mega Man game, so, oh jeez. I'm gonna have to admit though, this boss can be still quite tricky at certain points because obviously that he just somehow turn into the, you know, the blob and all that stuff though, because kind of think about it, 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 it still kind of reminds me of the forms of certain boss fights against with uh, 
Yellow Devil sometimes because of the forms of their attack patterns like this. So, but thankfully with the still with the bouncy uh, uh, blob uh, formation, it wasn't all that bad to be able to dodge. But it's just this attack right here is just so damn impossible to avoid because sometimes though I just cannot able to actually figure out the speed, especially noticeable with the forms of that particular safest placement in order able to actually just to defend myself or something like that. So. Oh well, no big deal, but at the very least we can now move on to the last of one of those, um, you know, um, star droids. So, yeah, you probably expect what this is going for this point, so, anyway, so let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, try to able to keep on hitting him by, uh, you know, trying to keep on using, uh, Mega Buster and stuff like that. I was expecting for Mega Arm as well, but, uh, um, I don't think it'll just pretty much, um, oh, Jesus Louise, come on. And there he goes. Whew. So there he goes, the, um, the rest of the actual, uh, Star Droids. And after that room is done, then much like the forms of how it does not make him in fourth for the Game Boy, obviously it takes us into, oh, another energy tank. That's actually pretty swell, because it's especially noticeable about the fact that, well, despite the fact that I lost a bit of my... Uh, let's, uh, you know, the small E item after the events of that particular Star Droid that, uh, for some reason, I just keep on, uh, attempting that, and because of that, though, it's still affected on that particular fight against with that, you know, one of those Star Droids, as far as I'm aware, but, uh, oh well, no big deal, but at the very least, oh, another energy tank, okay, uh, I'll take it, because that way we'll actually get ourselves all four of those energy tanks, and if we go all the way down here, and then basically we will able to actually stumble across within, is, oh jeez, this particular fall animation takes a bit longer, oh, okay, so this, that one appears to be Proto Man, so, and he's gonna give us, once again, the S item, which, I don't think there's any point, because, well, as you can tell, I've already, uh, filled up my weapon energy already, so, yeah, but thanks anyway, but, either way, though, I've already full up with my, you know, full power and everything, so, whoever needs that anyway. Okay, so here we go, on to stage 3 now, and because of this though, we're now going to be going on to the majority of the last few bosses. So in this case, the first up in the lineup is of course, Knuckle, um, or in this case, L Knuckle, and R Knuckle. So in this case though, is the fact that in order to deal the damage to the forms of either the, uh, or, just kind of think about it though, it's actually, uh, started with, uh, uh, let's just say, uh, the left, um, Knuckle. So in this case though, after this particular knuckle, it will move on to the next knuckle, so... Yeah, because basically all you have to do is, is basically is the fact that you have to keep on attacking its eyes, and then basically, if you're done with that, well, basically we are moving on to the right uh, knuckle, so because of that though, think of like if you try to kill the forms of Master Hand and Crazy Hand, because, well, if you think that the first uh, knuckle was actually a bit easier for you, well, here we go on to the second uh, knuckle, which I will say, that one is actually the hardest of the two. That's only mainly because, well, if he just starts to able to get close to it, he now moves a tad bit faster, and because of this though, he just loves to know where you're about to go. So, although it does have its weakness though, which appears to be body forms of salt water, so we can, at the very least, we can able to actually just try to deal some bit of damage there. Although I would like to, but um, unfortunately though, I'm going to have to do the hard way on this, so... Anyways though, so let's go ahead and uh... Oh jeez, I forgot about those missiles! And also every once in a while is the fact that if he thinks that he was about to get closer to grabbing you, uh, basically, as you can tell, that if you get grabbed, you get damaged, so... Yeah, it's basically, it can be acted out as like a similar thing as a claw machine, basically, so... And I believe if you somehow died to this fight, I'm pretty sure you have to start all over again with this entire fight, so... That's something need to... Oh, goodness gracious, that was such a close call! Oh, okay. Let's get rid of this missile before I die. Oh, and... There he goes. Whew! Seriously, this particular knuckle is almost, almost reminds me of Crazy Hand from the Super Smash Bros. games. So, I totally, I, uh, I have no idea why I just managed to able to bring this up, but, uh, because of such, after that particular boss has ended, then we can move on to, 
Well, suffice to say, Dr. Wily himself, which appears to be by the forms of the Brain Crusher. So I believe this particular boss fight does have two forms, so I think the first phase is nothing to do with the forms of the weapon. Instead, we need to rely on, after dealing with this particular enemy that divides gravity, so in this case, after dealing with him, we now need to utilize this thing, which appears to be a, uh, the ticking time bomb. And basically, though, is the fact that when it gets to zero, it explodes. And it's your job to able to actually just to uh, use the Mega Buster so many times until you're able to dra uh, just keep on shooting at uh, right where the Brain Crusher was for where Dr. Wily was controlling it. And then basically, though, you can able to actually deal a bit of damage on the first form. As for the second form, on the other hand, though, well, you probably want to expect of what the actual- Oh, jeez, I did not expect it, I just got hit right there. But, uh... Of course, you still need to be careful, though, especially noticeable with more missiles, and especially noticeable there are some spikes on the buff. And, oh, jeez, that was so unpredictable right there with that particular movement, but... Oh, well, we'll just, uh, keep trying, so... At the very least, though, this boss might be a bit easy, but the hardest part about this fight for me, though, is definitely the actual bombs, uh, you know, pattern right there. I will have to admit, though, right away, that is by far the hardest aspect about this fight, but, uh, actually gonna think about it. I think I probably will save the energy tank for later, because obviously I'll save that up until whatever we get to the, uh, the second form of this fight, so... Anyway, so let's go in and, uh, oh, okay, just only one second there, and I think he's only down to one hit left before we move on to the second form, in this case, the second phase of a fight, so, alright, so this time he's got seven seconds, yeah, as soon as he immediately decides to jump, basically just slide, and then basically you should be safe on the far left of the screen, and there goes the first form. Oh jeez, now the actual ceiling is about to get closer to the ground. So, it's about time to able to actually use the energy tank after all. So, at the very least, we should be all set until we take care of the second form. Hello, Dr. Wily again. I see you're up to no good again. So, at the very least, we can able to take you on again. So, anyway, so, I do definitely know he does have his weakness though, which appears to be Spark Chaser. But I think I should probably save that up until whatever we get to later, because for now... Doing the hard way by using the forms of the Mega Arm, so that way it'll do some bit of damage. And of course, you have to be very careful of the ceiling because obviously it contains spikes. So, and there goes Dr. Wily, and I somehow step onto his dome. And he got away. At the very least, he doesn't do a begging for forgiveness again this time. So, behold, Mega Man, I have awakened the ancient weapon, Sunstar. It's another weapon will destroy you. Oh boy. Oh boy. Sunstar, destroy Mega Man. Oh, this could be something. What? What? You fool. How dare you attack the mighty Dr. Wily? I guess it's kind of like the equivalent to the uh, certain Sonic games for Dr. Eggman trying to slave other creatures and stuff. You are Mega Man. I am Sunstar, the doomsday weapon. I must destroy all inferior life forms. Well, looks like here we have the final boss in Mega Man 5. So, yeah, it's a bit different though, rather than Dr. Wily again. So here we have Sunstar. In this case, the final boss in Mega Man 5 for the Game Boy. So obviously, that the his weakness, as you can tell, that I'm using is the forms of Spark Chaser. And that way, it deals uh, quite a bit of damage though, honestly. Even though that this particular boss might be a bit tough in this game, especially noticeable he moves a bit fast. And also, every once in a while though, is the fact that he destroys that platform until he's able to decide to move down. So... Either way though, you should probably be able to expect that you can able to actually use the Spike Chaser because let me tell you, Spike Chaser still managed to able to rock on this particular 
uh, I will say that that, that particular weapon is pretty awesome, actually, because, you know, as you probably already know, it's on that introduction screen. It actually hold me on to not only certain enemies, but also, uh, bosses as well. So there goes my, uh, energy tanks now, so I think we should be okay, because he's pretty much almost down. So, at the very least, though, that, uh, we can able to expect we can able to deal with the last few hits on him, though. Oh, jeez! Oh, goodness gracious, he's moving way too fast! Oh, wait a second, we didn't kill him? Are you okay? Here, grab my... shoulder. I'm sure you can be... fixed by Dr. Light's lab. Mega Man, why? Why are you helping me? Because we are both robots. Yes, and we were both created to fight. No, you're wrong. I only fight when I am forced to protect the world from those who would pit brook machines against men. I believe humans and robots can live in peace. Maybe, but I will never know. My fusion reactor is going uh, critical, and when it does, it will destroy this entire fortress. Sunstar, leave now. Well, be my guest. So, of course, just like before, the actual, uh, the place is about to explode, so this is all automated too, so you don't have to press anything, so we can just simply hop onto, uh, Rush Space. So, at the very least, we can able to escape, and just like in any other Star Wars films, like specifically episode, um, I would say episode 4, and especially notice for episode 6, then obviously, uh, Wily Star is about to explode, so... And I'm sure that, uh, Dr. Wally's pretty much escaped during time, so, uh, yep, there he goes. I gotta say, that was definitely a wild adventure yet, for, uh, going to outer space and all that stuff, though, for the majority of the whole entire game. So now we can just simply go back to Earth, and, well, just to see how anyone else is up to. Oh, it just uh, goes into, I would say, the credit sequence. So, at the very least, I can able to actually just to say my, uh, well, you probably what to expect of what's, what I'm about to say. Yeah, basically, uh, much like before, it shows you the forms of uh, the actual uh, Star Troid's uh, roll call, and especially noticeable with uh, this time around, Mega Man just sitting in the grassy fields and then just staring at the uh the sky itself so yeah it's a little bit different than the likes of how it does it on the walk cycle from the likes of the forms of the previous three games for sure so uh yeah let's give my final thoughts of uh Mega Man 5 for the Game Boy I will say out of all the actual Game Boy Mega Man games throughout the majority of this series I will say, this is actually is the best one out of the forms of every other Game Boy Mega Man games. Because for one, uh, the level design is actually new and unique, and especially noticeable when it comes to the, uh, the Star Droids too. Which I will say, that those designs of those Star Droids are really awesome. And on top of all that stuff though, I really enjoy the music in this game. And the visuals department, well despite it's relatively the same, as the other four games, but with the Super Game Boy attached to it, then obviously it just makes things a lot more nicer this time. So, and uh, the gameplay, you know what I mean. Wily, you survived? Curse you, Mega Man. This war ends now. And looks like your capsule is just about to blow up. Blown up to pieces. So, uh, and also the gameplay itself. I really do enjoy the gameplay, especially noticeable about the fact that I usually uh, do like the introduction to Tango, the cat. So, uh, 
And uh, the story is relatively new and interesting. And uh, finally, the controls still relatively the same as the previous games, so... But all in all, you should definitely give Mega Man 5 for the Game Boy a shot, especially noticeable on the emulator, although you have to hurry up if you ever own the 3DS, because until the next few days, that uh, the eShop applications will be closed on the 3DS. So, yeah, you better have to hurry things up, because if you don't make it in time, then obviously you'll be too late. Although, you can able to play the game on the emulator, if that's your only option. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching of our Let's Play of Mega Man 5 for the Game Boy. So this is me, Mighty the Armadillo, from the likes of the Maxi Toys, and sure enough, Dr. Wiley managed to beg for forgiveness again, but this time during the credits. So, anyways though, so and I think that pretty much wraps it up for every single Game Boy Mega Man games now. So, yeah, that was a bit of a lot more fun. Especially noticeable in the fifth game in the series though, because of outer space exploration. So as a result though, yeah, we're done with the Game Boy Mega Man games. So up next, in terms of the forms of the Mega Man Marathon 2 selections of games, up next is going to be Mega Man and Base Challenger from the Future on the Bandai Wonderswan. So I think Tiana, she's going to be able to tackle for that game. So that's her second time going on to the Bandai Wonderswan game next to Klonoa Moonlight Museum. So uh, stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.